Hello, I'm Pastor Mark, an interim pastor here at the Community Church of Glen Rock. It is my joy and pleasure to be interviewing our next interviewee, who will now introduce herself. Hi, I'm uh, Laura Bird. I am a longtime member here at this church, and I'm the vice president of the consistory. I must thank you. You are one of the key players in getting me a contract here as an interim pastor. <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> and you said you're here a long time. How long? Um, I think it's been 20 years. Uh, I started coming here with my children when they were young, and uh, they've grown up and gone on to different places to live and different things to do, but I'm still coming here. That's wonderful. And uh, how long have you been vice president of Consistory? Uh, for just for about two years. It's a, uh, a lot of work. It's a big job, but I um, kind of like it in some ways. And uh, it's been about two years. What jobs did you do before that? Here at the church? Yes. Uh, I've always been in the choir. Um, I've played my cello here a little bit at times. Mm -hmm. um, you know, vo volunteering to, you know, get up various uh, events and fundraisers and um, that, but, you know, an elder, I've been a deacon, I've been an elder. That's a lot of work. Yesterday, you and I served communion to this congregation. It mm -hmm. was a joy to work with you. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm told that you work for the Wall Street Journal in your secular life. Yes, I do. I, uh, I'm i a news editor there, and I've been there even longer than I've been a member of this church. I've worked there for 30 34 years, 33 years. That's amazing. Well, were you always an editor? Were you a reporter? What did you do? I started out as a reporter uh, working on the advertising and retail business beats. You know, kind of back in the day, those were like the glamorous. Um, <laughs> uh, there was a window into the paper. You know, the paper was just very heavily into like financial bonds, economics. That was one of the softer things that we did now. In digital news, you know, everybody wants a little of everything. So we have a lot of lifestyle and uh, softer business and uh, other types of coverage, international news, national news, political news. We have the whole buffet of news. Yes. And, uh, it's interesting. I still miss holding a copy of newspapers. <laughs> yes. Even though I do digitally subscribe, I miss that. And here's a complete side note. My uh, uncle Arthur was very, very into finance. Mm -hmm. His wife said that he loved his finance and his Wall Street Journal more than he loved her. No. She told him she was going to bury him with a Wall Street Journal. <laughs> and just before they closed his casket, she walked up with a Wall Street Journal copy and put it on top of him and then said close the cast that is really <laughs> adorable <laughs> i have my neighbors subscribe to the printed paper and they get two copies so that mm -hmm. they can each have their own <laughs> i'm not going there right? <laughs> you have to have your own newspaper i think for newspaper lovers it's all about the first time you unfold it and the smell and like if somebody has done that already, it's not quite as good. That's my impression. Okay. <laughs> I think I'm moving right along for that. Now, I also heard a rumor that you know Ivana Gershkovich, who was the Wall Street reporter arrested in Russia. Is that true? Yes. Well, I I I do I did work with him. He, you know, he was it felt like a personal affront to me that one of my you know, colleagues should be basically kidnapped like that. I'm not, he's not my friend. We're not good buddies or anything, but I have a strong feeling of, you know, protectiveness and allegiance to him and all my other colleagues. And, uh, you know, he was just immorally kidnapped and held for, you know, almost two years while he was in the, or a year and a half while he was in the prime of his life. He's, you know, 30 year old young man mm -hmm. starting a career. And, you know, basically from what I understand, you know, confined in pretty miserable conditions for that sure. period of time and kind of helpless on his own to do anything. So, 
you know, the United States government mobilized and our newspaper mobilized to uh, do a campaign of awareness and pressure such as we are able to exert. Um, and, you know, it worked. And, you know, our church also participated in it. I mean, our church, this church heard about him felt outraged as well, came to me and wanted to know more details. And I shared as much as I could, you know, in terms of links where people could send him letters um, and follow his story. You know, we had a lot of dedicated uh, news pages to his work and his plight. And the congregation was very faithful in wanting to be updated and, um, you know, praying for him, basically praying for at least for him to, feel like there were people behind him yes as he's alone confined in a cell you know feel that people are with him and uh i think it worked you know i i have not had a chance to talk to him since his release i'm not sure i ever will but i did you know send him notes and i one point i said are you getting a lot of letters from church people in new jersey because if you are they're my friends and we're all thinking about you um, so I hope he, you know, I hope he read them and I hope he felt it because we were definitely sending it his way. That is wonderful. I had no idea this congregation was involved with this, basically an international incident. Yes. Wow. How many people he were praying? I, I Certainly a dozen, you know, which is, <laughs> I wish I could say hundreds. But no, I mean, there were certainly a core group of people who are, always checking on the prayer list. And, you know, I know in the privacy of their own, you know, time alone with God, they uh, were praying for Evan and his, and his family, you know, his, we, our paper was able to sort of document the plight of his family, his parents and his sister mm. that, the, you know, they're a close family. They, and their beloved son and brother is taken from them, you know? So yes, uh, I also prayed for them. That's a wonderful job you did. Sometimes we underestimate prayer, but it's powerful, even though it can be subtle. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good message for everyone listening to this interview. If you go out on Rock Road and you see our front sign, you'll see the words, we're praying for you. That's because we are. And if you folks have problems, difficulties you need praying for, send it to us. Send your prayer concerns to us. Our prayers will rise on your behalf. Anything else you want to tell me that I need to know besides you're a tremendous cellist? Is that, is that accurate? Uh, tremendous. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tremendous is a good word for it. <laughs> good. And I'm sure hoping maybe during Advent, certainly Lent, I need to hear that cello of yours played. I haven't heard it yet. Okay, well. I hope we can arrange you. that. What's your favorite cello piece? Oh, dear. There's just so many aren't there. I've been, uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of good repertoire for the cello. You know, the Dvorak Cello Concerto is really a masterpiece and Hopefully when I, one day I'll be playing it somewhere. Okay. <laughs> Let me do it that way. <laughs> okay. That's wonderful. So if you folks love gorgeous cello music, check in with us and we'll let you know when Laura will be celloing. Is that the right word? <laughs> I've heard it before. Yes. Okay. Celloing for us. And seriously, if you do need prayers, contact us. And better yet, come and join us in prayers. We'll be advertising this Wednesday at 8 p.m. We've got a online Bible study, and it's all about women in the Bible. And part of that uh, time that group spends is in prayer. Prayer, cello, this is the place contact us and please remember we are certainly praying for you thank you laura for taking this time thank you for having me